Welcome, everyone, to another edition of The Travel Show with your host, Ted Blank, of Ted Blank Luxury Travel and Adventure. And we are going to dig into 2025. It's hard to believe it's time to talk about 2025, isn't it? Well, not when I talk with you, because you said that the early bird catches the worm. They do. They do. And we're going to talk about 2025 in Alaska. Ooh, love it. And so a very common question that I get asked is, when is the best time to plan a trip to Alaska? And so my kind of smart answer is um, yesterday, but my real answer is right now. Oh. So January, February, March, April of 2024 is the best time to plan a trip to Alaska in 2025. And when people talk about going to Alaska in any year, what is the right season? The typical season for Alaska will run from basically Memorial Day through Labor Day. Okay. So May through September. And because it's a very short season, because Alaska isn't filled with skyscrapers and giant resorts, things sell out and things fill up really, really quickly. So we've been working with folks in the last couple of weeks who are going to Alaska this year, and we're kind of down to the leftovers in terms of inventory. And so people who are thinking about Alaska, if you've had it on your bucket list, 2025 is a great year to go. And now is the time to plan it. Oh, Ted, that is really great to hear. So when you say that people are planning, do you help them really formulate a whole trip? Because when I hear about I'd like to go to Alaska. That can mean a lot of different things. It can really mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And so we try to work with folks going to Alaska, my team and I, to put together a really comprehensive vacation. So it might start with flights from here, a cruise, a land tour, a little bit of time before the cruise, a little bit of time after the cruise, flights home. You know, we really help them put together a comprehensive vacation. And is that something that you would like to talk to people about ahead of time to find out what they're really looking for? Yeah, we do. You know, I I think I would say that I'm an Alaska expert. And so I have a lot of things in the back of my mind that maybe folks haven't thought about and options that they maybe haven't considered. And by talking to them, by listening to them, I can match them up with these things, a lot of which they probably have no idea are even possible. No, you know, and in the times that you have spoken about Alaska, I agree with you. I didn't know that you could do or see half of the things that you're talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you factor in the size ship that you go on and there's so many different so many, ways. So many options. Yes, so many, so many options. options. Yeah. Well, what do you want to tell our listeners about today? Well, so we're actually going to do kind of a two-part series. So okay. the folks are going to have to listen in next week as well. So so mark the time on your calendar. I don't know if you remember Batman, but they'd always same same bat time, <laughs> same bat channel. So <laughs> next week will be same bat time, same bat channel. Um, but I want to talk about some of the things that are new for the Alaska 2025 season. Okay. Because it's been so neat, you know, as we've recovered from COVID and travel has kind of realigned and come companies have taken a look at doing and offering different things. My agency has done that as well. So we put together some new options that I think are going to be really exciting for people. Shaking it up. Shaking it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So so the first one combines, I think, something that's super, super popular, and that's trains. (gasps) Trains and a cruise to Alaska and a tour of Alaska. What a better combination. No kidding. And so you've, you know, you've pretty much always been able to travel on the Alaska Railroad from Anchorage to Denali National Park, way up in mainland Alaska. And you've always been able to take the White Pass and Yukon Scenic Train. That's a little narrow gauge scenic train from the port of Skagway. And it takes about a two hour trip up into the mountains. So it's a spectacular daylight sightseeing trip. But we have two different options that are available for 2025. And the first one, believe it or not, starts actually right here close to home. What? And we can arrange for travelers who are going to Alaska, we can arrange for them to leave Red Wing or St. Paul on Amtrak and travel across the country to Portland or to Seattle or to both, spend a little time there, and then head up to Vancouver and catch their ship to go to Alaska, or vice versa. We can do it in both ways. And so you have not only the magic of Alaska, mm-hmm. you have the spectacular two-day train ride across the you know the Great Plains of North Dakota and Montana. Mm-hmm. You go through Glacier National Park. Oh. And then you also travel through the beautiful Cascade Mountains along the coast of Washington. And then when you travel between Portland and Seattle or Seattle and Vancouver, you travel right along the edge of Puget Sound. Oh, and wow. literally you could throw a baseball out and it would be in the ocean. So some really, really neat scenic rail trips 
trips there. And we can customize a package for folks that includes that train trip as well as hotels in Seattle, Seattle and Portland, Seattle, Portland and Vancouver, all to put together kind of a seamless package before the cruise or after the cruise. Is this on Amtrak? This is on Amtrak. So yep. I actually have traveled Amtrak and I love it. It's so relaxing. It's so relaxing. The scenery is beautiful. Even it Montana, is. even North Dakota, you know, you realize why they call Montana big sky country mm-hmm. when you get out there. It's, it's really beautiful. You know, flat, but beautiful. Interesting history, good food, comfortable accommodations. Absolutely. But here's the deal. Every day there's an Amtrak train from here to the Pacific Northwest. It has 10 sleeping bedrooms available. That's all 10, a total of 10, not 100, not 1,000, 10. And it has about 26 or 28 of the little roomettes, which are kind of the compartments for for one or two people. So there's not much space on these trains. So out of everything I talk about in this two-part series on Alaska, this is the thing that will sell out the first Mm -hmm. and the fastest. So we're actually starting a waiting list at the agency for folks who are interested in traveling to or from the Pacific Northwest by train. And as soon as that inventory comes online in the next couple months, we want to get you booked right away because those 10 bedrooms in the peak summer season, those are the kind of things that sell out 10 to 18 months in advance. Have you ever been on a train in those bedrooms? Oh, yeah. Traveled? Oh, absolutely. Several I mean, times, yeah. It's Very comfortable. Yeah. Super comfortable. Yeah. And you don't want to travel any other No, you kind of don't. You kind of don't. It Some puts, of them actually have their own machine. bathroom. Yeah, they have their own bathroom. Your meals are included in the dining exactly. car. You have access to the lounge car. So it's a really neat, and it's a really neat experience. somebody that is waiting on you kind of, you know. You have a room steward as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice experience. And, you know, a lot of people would love to combine that with a trip to Alaska. We can help make that, that possible. That is so cool. Yeah. How long would you have to allow? What? So the train trip from here takes about 36 hours. Oh, it does. Okay. And then, you know, you're going out there to go to a place like Seattle or Portland. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might spend two or three nights before the cruise doing that beforehand or afterwards, Mm -hmm. depending on which direction you go. If you go to Portland, Oregon, a little further south, you might spend a little longer. And this is very customizable. So we can customize it to meet your, you know, meet your interests and your time commitment. Love that. Wow. That's awesome, Ted. Yeah. So we're not done. There's more. Oh, tell us. There's a second train. And this one's a little more complicated. You Mm -hmm. have to hop on an airplane and fly to Calgary. Okay. In Canada. This is about an hour and a half flight. And in Calgary, you can catch something we've talked about before, which is a scenic Canadian train called the Rocky Mountaineer. Mm -hmm. And it starts in the beautiful Canadian Rockies in Banff and Lake Louise National Park. And you travel through those Canadian Rockies on a two-day, one-night trip. So you will actually take a day traveling through the Canadian Rockies, get off, spend the night in a hotel, get back on, and spend the next day traveling. One of the most scenic train routes in America. If you've ever watched any of those train TV series on PBS, this ranks at the very, very top. Mm. And again, it's something that we can customize and combine with some stuff beforehand. You know, you can see Lake Louise, Banff, you can even spend some time in Calgary, and then a little bit of time in Vancouver before you embark on your cruise, or vice versa. So this one, very popular, will definitely sell out, but the train trip across the U.S. will probably go a little bit quicker. But again, if you're interested in this for 2025, we can help you start to plan that now, today. And again, the way you can dovetail this together is something that really only a travel expert can do, really, right? I really, mean, essentially, yes. It, yep. Yeah, yeah. You don't go try and this Where is you, not yeah, for don't amateurs. Don't try this is something, not for the amateurs. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and there are so many neat permutations on this that we can mm-hmm. put together for you. So it can really be customized, but that core train experience is a really cool thing. And we're excited to, you know, let people know that it's possible and that we can help make it a reality for Especially you. Especially in such beautiful country. It's such a beautiful country. Both the U.S. and Canada. Exactly. Both beautiful options. Yeah. Hard to wow. choose between them. That is awesome, Ted. Yeah. So what else is a new twist on Alaska? So another new twist is the city of Victoria, which is in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. It's actually the capital of British Columbia, but it's on an island. Didn't know that. Yep, and the island is called Vancouver Island, so if you're not confused now, (laughs) you might be. But it's located about halfway between Seattle and Vancouver. And so we are working with a company that runs a high-speed ferry between downtown Seattle and downtown Victoria. And so you could you could actually travel by train, you could fly to Seattle, and you take this ferry to Victoria, and you can spend anywhere from one to four or five nights in Victoria. It has some absolutely beautiful hotels around the Inner Harbor. Mm. A lot of people have probably heard of the Empress Hotel that's, you know, one of those big, famous, old Canadian Pacific Railroad hotels. And it's a beautiful, beautiful island, beautiful, beautiful city, very British 
in its feel. And Victoria is the home to Butch Art Gardens, which is probably one of the most beautiful botanical gardens in North America. Absolutely gorgeous location, great climate. And so they have a rose garden, but imagine not, you know, roses by the row, roses by the acre. Mm. I mean, just an incredible, incredible garden. Even if you're not an avid gardener, it's a neat sight to see. So you can spend a couple days there and then head to Vancouver and catch the cruise there. Or again, do it vice versa. Mm -hmm. And the trip to Vancouver, you actually have two options. One is you can fly on a float plane. The other is you can take a motor coach that takes you on a ferry. And the ferry is a really, really scenic ferry ride that kind of goes through the intercoastal waterways of Vancouver Island to take you from Vancouver to the mainland. So hard to choose no between kidding. them, but a really nice little, you know, bow you can tie on the beginning mm-hmm. or the ending of your cruise. And again, we can make this a very seamless experience for you. So do you have recommendations of these things before or after a cruise? I mean, do you have a preference? You know, you will see essentially the same thing, Mm -hmm. regardless of the direction you go. And so sometimes for people, it can come down to the time, you know, the day of the week that the ship is scheduled. That's kind of the one thing that you have to work around a little bit, but you'll really see the same thing in both directions. So it's one of those kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. But what I will say is that the best cabins on those ships, they're selling now. People are booking them now. Mm. And so, again, this is the kind of thing where we want to get something put on the calendar for you, you know, in the next couple months. So we got that space locked in for you and you can enjoy it and really have a whole year to anticipate the trip before it's time to go. And do some planning and research. And do some planning and research and, you know, look into restaurants and things like that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's, that's part of the fun of travel, I think, isn't it? Wow. Yes, I agree. I just didn't know if sometimes people would want to, they look at the cruise as really a relaxation piece. Yeah, it's a great way to relax because you don't have to pack an unpack. Right, but so is the train, So is really. the train. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you people may not know that you had a career in railroading. I understand. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I thought you were the ticket conductor on the Music City <laughs> Express or something like that. I heard through the grapevine. <laughs> As a train conductor in music band? I was terrible. <laughs> so see, you know, I mean, not everybody has to work in the rail industry to enjoy I love local a trip theater, on the though. train. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I got to add that to my resume. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard. So it sounds like you have taken Alaska, which a lot of people think they probably know if they go on a lot of cruises or trips to Alaska. But you've added some tweaks that it's yeah, going to be Yeah, you know, we try to listen to what folks are mm-hmm. interested in and what sometimes is really hard to deliver. And so we've kind of taken a step back and said, okay, how can we offer people these rail packages? And how can we offer people the opportunity to go to Victoria before the cruise? Because it isn't easy. This isn't a click, click point Mm -hmm. situation. So we've reached out to folks and we've put together, I think, some solid programs that will be great opportunities for folks who want to do this. Yeah, no kidding. So where do we start with something like this? Yeah, the best way to start is to give me a call. 651-964-8245, or go to my website, tedblanktravel.com, and you can request an appointment with me. And we'll sit down, and we'll pull out a map of Alaska, and we'll kind of talk. And I'm going to listen to what are your interests. You know, do you like fishing? Do you like bears? Do you want to try some different foodie experiences? Do you want to meet the natives? You know, what is it that you really want to do? And then we'll kind of put together a plan and make it a reality for you. So these are really customized trips. Very customized, very customized, yep. That must be fun for you to put together. It's very fun. It's very fun, yeah. Because, you know, there are a lot of great sort of off-the-shelf travel products Mm -hmm. out there, but it's fun to do something different. And I think that's what people are looking for. They want Mm -hmm. to do what they want to do. And so the more we can offer that, that's good for our clients. One other new option in Alaska involves bears. It does. And so, you know, if you've got your fill of trains, this involves bears. And so there is a national park in Alaska called the Katmai National Park. The only way to get there is to fly from Anchorage on a little airplane. Mm -hmm. And it is bear central. More bears than people. And it's always been one of those places that it's been really, really difficult to get to. And I'm really excited that we can now offer in 2025 the opportunity to visit Katmai National Park to get pretty close to bears. You know, as close as you might be comfortable with getting close to bears as part of an Alaskan tour that would also include Denali National Park and an Alaskan cruise. And so this was exciting. When I first heard that this was going to be offered, I was super excited. And I think this will really, really be popular 
because everybody wants to see bears. Now you're from a safe vantage point, okay. safe distance. You know, you're you're supervised. You're not dropped out of the airplane and left to wander with the bears. And you know, whoever makes it back gets a free lunch. So it's a really neat experience. Folks have been asking for this for a long time. So I'm really excited that it's going to be available in 2025. We don't know the dates on it quite yet, but I'm putting together a list of people who are interested. So if you would be interested in going to Alaska and making this a part of the experience, please reach out to me right away because we want to put you on the list because as soon as this becomes available, I think it's going to go right like that. So super exciting. We don't know the dates yet. We don't know the full details, but it's going to be available in 2025. And I think that's a really neat new addition to Alaska. I'm, I'm ready to sign up. I've never been there. I've never been that close to, well, one time, but that was by accident. I've never really been that close to a bear. And so I'm excited to go to the Katmai National Park and see the bears. And this is their, in their natural habitat. They're this... in their natural habitat. Wow. Yep. So you're in kind of a national park and mm-hmm. there are places where the bears come and they've put in place some viewing platforms and and, you know, wow. opportunities to see the bears. So in their natural environment, mm-hmm. not in a zoo, not mm-hmm. in a sanctuary, out in the wild. Boy, that does sound exciting. Yeah, I, 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 this is cool. This is something I'm So would that be about. considered a side trip, a day trip? Or? No, it's actually an overnight. So you spend okay. a night okay. out there in kind of the wilds of the Katmai National Park, and then you'll fly back to Anchorage and catch the train and go up to Denali and do the things that all the other tourists do. But boy, what a story you'll have to tell when you get on the train and you're like, I was just out there hanging with the bears. What were you doing? <laughs> I was in the casino. So it'd be, be a good story. It sounds like a great yeah. story. Again, would you give your contact information yeah. if people want to get a hold of you? Best way to get a hold of me is to call me at 651-964-8245 or visit my website, tedblanktravel.com. Did you have a contest you wanted to talk about? I do. I do. We're actually going to debut it next week. I but, can't wait. Um, we are going to be giving away a cruise voucher. $250 towards an Alaskan cruise nice. in 2025. And so folks are going to have to tune in next week to hear all the details. Oh, I love this. Ted, you're keeping us hanging. We really appreciate that. The Travel Show is heard every Thursday. And your host, of course, is Ted Blank of Ted Blank Luxury Travel and Adventure. And you are listening to another edition of The Travel Show on KDWA. This travel show has been brought to you by Ted Blank Luxury Travel and Adventures.